Welcome back for our next presentation on the biosecurity topic, which takes so many aspects. We're happy to have Brandon Mulnix joining us. Thank you, Brandon, and I will turn it to you now. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me and being able to present today. Um, today's topic is going to be services best practices. Um, get the service your farm needs without increasing your risk for biosecurity. Um, let me first introduce myself. Probably many, if not all of you, probably don't know who I am, but I'm from Poultry Management Systems Incorporated, a um, little company in Lowell, Michigan that's been taking care of the poultry world for about 40 years now. And why does a controls and automation company speak on biosecurity? Well, the great part is, is with 40 years of experience, um, we've been in any size of farm. We've, you know, taken care of problems all across the United States and Canada for, for so many years that we, we've got a pretty good grasp on what it takes to be successful, a successful vendor or a successful partner for you as a farm, farm manager. Um, but what about biosecurity? Well, that's where our field technicians come in. Before I did this presentation, I actually reached out to um, our field techs and our team of experts to say, you know, to kind of gather the information to speak to you guys um, and gals and, and figure out what, how to best utilize technology to solve your problems. Because as biosecurity continues to grow, and as we learned that through the cold COVID-19, we're, we're a sensitive culture to biosecurity across the board. Um, we wanna make sure that all of your vendors are successful for you, whether that's your electrician, whether that's your equipment provider, whether that's your controls folks. Um, if, and hopefully maybe you'll get something out of today that will you know, spark, a, spark an interest and you'll be able to go back and you'll be able to implement um, maybe one of the two things we talked about today. So biosecurity and technology, man, the good old days were nice. It wasn't uncommon for, you know, for our sales guys to be able to get in a pickup truck and, and go from farm to farm, um, building to building, and there was no issue. Our, you know, our team of technicians could solve, you know, problems at three or four farms in a week. And then times changed. Um, with that time is, you know, with avian, the avian flu, um, the set rules became in place for each and every farm and not all of them are the same, which is kind of confusing for a lot of vendors because we want to make sure that we can um, solve your problems in a timely manner. Um, what, what's interesting is, you know, when we used to be able to set on, you know, set a foot on a farm and be able to visit and be able to fix the little things for, it seemed like everything was going to go in smooth when you know farmers would call and say, "Hey, we'd like these little issues taken care of. Can you you know stop by for a visit?" That was no problem. With, but as things started happening, and as biosecurity started to go into effect, we became less efficient. If my technicians stopped by on a on a Monday, um, and you know helped you out for maybe two hours, they became out of service basically for three days um, on most farms. So they couldn't step foot and solve someone else's problem, even right down the street for 72 hours. And if you're a sports fan, many of you guys probably are, um, that would be like, you know, taking Ron Holiday and having him pitch, you know, first game of the World Series and saying, oh, by the way, you can't pitch until maybe game seven of the World Series um, because of the amount of time. That wouldn't, that wouldn't have worked well for Toronto in the years that he pitched for them. But how does this relate to technology? Well, there are a number of good solutions out there as it relates to technology. Um, we're, my goodness, we're doing it right now. We're meeting um, via video conference and we're able to connect and solve problems without all sitting in the same room. Why this is, why this is important is is, are you utilizing this technology at the farm level and how that works, how that works, what kind of access do you have on your farm? Um, for many years, you know, uh, dial telephone was all you had. No one had cell phones. So if you, someone wanted to connect to you, they, you know, they left you a message or, you know, they kept calling until they got a hold of somebody. 
Well, in today's world, vendors, all vendors are expected to have some type of customer support. They should be available to you 24 hours a day because your chickens don't take a day off. Neither does your equipment that's running. So tech support should be available to you 24 seven, but how can they be most effective? By utilizing any type of remote service, whether that's your equipment provider helping you troubleshoot a bad motor, whether that's your feed supplier trying to make sure that they have enough feed for you or that they're communicated with to be able to fill your hoppers. Um, all of that's important, but they just got to be able to make sure that they can connect. So it's interesting because most of you guys probably have someone on staff that is the MacGyver of sorts. They can fix just about anything. They can you know, stitch back the manure belt with baler twine and duct tape and get it to work on a Sunday afternoon. But what happens when they need help? What happens when there's a problem that they can't solve? Well, in the past, you might have had a technician, you know, be able to stop in or maybe a couple after a couple of days, stop in and, and help you solve that. In today's world, that's not as possible. Even with borders being closed because of um, COVID, it's even shown us more reliance on, on using outside service to support yourself and your farm. So how do you, how do, you do that? How do you make sure that your barn is, um, is connected? Well, there's a lot of opportunities out there now with technology, being able to um, provide you a connected um, farm. But that's also the expectations as our younger generation of farmers are coming up. They're so used to having their cell phone in their, in their pocket and being able to connect in so many ways that unfortunately, um, you know, growing up, I, I didn't even have that connectivity available to me. So why, again, is this important or what, what's important? So the first thing I ask is, are your controls connected to the internet? Not every farm has the same access to the internet um, based on location, but what's important when it comes to um, really good technical support is if your, your, your farm is connected to the internet, whether that's your satellite, dial-up, cell, cellular network, DSL, um, fiber. Um, I know in a local area around here, fiber's being ran into the rural area faster than it's being ran into the more... Um, the city areas because there's more businesses like farms and processing plants and um, manufacturers that are using that are re utilizing fiber to be connected to the internet. And if for some reason your farm isn't connected to the internet, are they at least connected to a central office? Do you have a place where you can, you know, call, use a landline phone and call a technical support for um, staff for any of your vendors and be able to get an answer? Um, so many times our technicians struggle with being able to reach farm staff because they're not able to either use a phone or something. They're, they're not connected in some way. So the idea is make sure that at least there's a central office where a technician can call and get a hold of somebody to then connect with the farm, whether it be a radio or some other means. Um, so that way we're all, we're all, everybody can work most efficiently. And then, then I put on here also, is, this, is the phone service, is there, is there at least phone service, uh, service to the barn? And then I know in many of the times I've called folks, you know, cellular network was not available in the barn. And that's not just, you know, in your area, but it's, it's everywhere in the United States and Canada where cell phone service isn't available in the barn. The best thing that you can do to, to improve that is to bridge the communication gap between outside support team and your farm. But that outside that communication gap won't just benefit the vendors. It'll also benefit um, internal, internally as well. And what I mean by that is, when when you're connected um, inside, is you're able to, um, you know, whether it's a computer, anytime you can limit the amount of exposure to your birds, and that means walking from outside to inside in your birds, or walk or, or inside your farm or walking from barn to barn, um, if you can limit that exposure, that will potentially reduce the risk of any type of bios, biosecurity event and probably keep your um, flocks quite a bit healthier. So there's a number of different um, technology solutions out there. 
whether that's a centralized network or a computer system that allows you to access the flock from your office or your production house or um, even your maintenance um, barn, whatever it takes to be able to look inside your barn without having to walk inside the barn, being able to look for the data, um, look at the data on production. Um, we've even heard stories lately of farmers installing um, video s- surveillance systems inside their barns. And with that, they include audio just so they can hear the birds. And if they have access to that remotely, they can basically see what their birds are doing on a daily basis without having to go into the barn. Now, there's still some daily activities, but if you can limit even by 25%, the times that someone goes from outside your barn to inside, you're reducing the risk. Other products on the market, um, this is a product called Therm. What it does is a product like this um, identifies a problem using artif- um, AI um, technology to, to monitor motors and understand, hey, there's going to be a problem with this motor because it's running at higher amperage than any other motor in, this, in the system. Maybe you want to fix that. Maybe you want to fix that while you're also in there working on some other daily operations, thus limiting even the need to call an outside technician into your, into your barn. Um, technology and using um, any of the computer science out there, it's going to help you go leaps and bounds in preventing biosecurity. Another one is in today's connected world, if you don't have access to your barn from your cell phone, um, it's out there. I mean, we can put a man on the moon. We can um, take pictures of Mars. There's a lot of things that we can do in today's world. The simple fact that you should be able to um, look at your phone and see the health of your birds is it's out there. Um, So if you're not currently utilizing something like that, there are many vendors that have products like, um, like remote access to the, to their information. Another important thing that this is coming from the vendors themselves is making sure that there's internet connection at the barn, that there's radio connect comms there, that there's landline, if no cell phone service, and also clean tools. Um, it's not uncommon for customers to actually provide tools for our technicians to make sure that exposure doesn't happen to their flock just by carrying a dirty tool bag around that was covered in um, manure from the last barn. So in conclusion, look for opportunities to reduce the exposure. Provide your staff and support vendors with the communication tools. They can be honest. They can be most effective. It's really so it's a struggle for them even on the farm level to be able to reach out there is technology out there. There are cell phone providers that provide boosters um, that you can place on your barn that will allow you cell phone service inside the barn. So that way they don't have to go outside the barn to communicate back to a vendor. Also keep learning. Technology is advancing quickly. Reach out for help sooner. Um, and we're always happy to, um, we, are, we are always here to make you, su- here to make you successful. So I appreciate the time today. I know it was shorter than I, I usually like to speak, but um, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at um, PMSI. I, my contact information is up on the screen, so don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you again, Brandon, and our sponsor at Poultry Management Systems Incorporated for not only reminding us that we can get the service we need without increasing the risk, but also have a look at how you're connected on that farm.